This is Twit. So some Dutch researchers discovered this. As a consequence, they checked Europe and found more than 200 million uh, Broadcom chipset-based cable modems vulnerable to what they found. I would imagine that probably means worldwide, what, half a billion? Five, that is to say more than 500 million. Um, the website is Cable Haunt, C-A-B-L-E, H-A-U-N-T dot com. And I have that link and a link to the report, the, their, their full PDF report in the show notes. So let me explain what new horror we have here and what it means. Um, Cable Haunt is the name given to a new critical vulnerability found in cable modems from various manufacturers around the world. The reason so many various brands share the same problem is the very worrisome tendency we're seeing toward a monoculture. Broadcom is by far the dominant supplier of cable modem core technology, and Broadcom published some reference firmware which everyone copied. Remember, we saw this in the universal plug-and-play UPnP, where yep. Intel published something that wasn't meant to be used. <laughs> and everyone an just example, said, well, it works. folks, this is how you would do it, maybe, sort of. <laughs> but don't forget, you got to put error checking in. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? So, this vulnerability ultimately enables remote attackers to execute arbit arbitrary code on vulnerable cable modems, and pretty much everyone's cable modem is vulnerable. Um, at this point, it looks pretty much like all modems are vulnerable. There are some, I'll, I'll mention some, that, that look like they're older that are based on a TI chipset. But far, you know, far, well, I mean, like my cable modem is vulnerable. Uh, looks like they all are, uh, with, with exceptions. So this exploitation is accomplished indirectly through an endpoint on the internal local network. Um, so they have to be inside through, the house. Well, they have to be on your browser. That Your uh, browser can do so it. So malware can and do it, yeah. Malware could do it. A bad ad could do it. A, 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 a compromised IoT camera. Anything on, in, anything on your LAN is able to do this. Um, through this malicious communication, a buffer overflow could be exploited to gain control over the cable modem. So the researchers write, there are an estimated 200 million cable modems in Europe alone, with almost no cable modem tested being secure without a firmware update. The number of modems initially vulnerable in Europe is estimated to be close to 200 million. Wow. However... It is difficult to give a precise estimate of the reach of cable haunt. And, of course, everybody's busy testing their modems. There is a, a Linux script, a Linux Python script available, so Linux users can test. Unfortunately, that doesn't look like there's an easy way to do it in Windows. I'm hoping, you know, it's the kind of thing I, I would normally do, uh, do one of my jiffy quickie things, but everybody wants me to get back to spin right six one and I do too. So I'm not going to do it. But, and the other thing is it's just not that difficult. I'm sure this, this time next week, I will be talking about some freeware that has been created to allow people to check their, their environments. There are some things you can do immediately. that are cool that I will share during this podcast. Okay. So, um, the reason they, they said the reason for this is that the vulnerability originated in reference software, which has seemingly been copied by different cable modem manufacturers when creating their cable modem firmware. This means they're saying that we have not been able to track the exact spread of the vulnerability and that it might present itself in slightly different ways for different manufacturers. We have contacted as many of the largest ISPs, and they're talking Europe, and manufacturers as we could ahead of time to give them time to fix the issue, but with varying success. 
some of the contacted ISPs have informed us that they have or are rolling out firmware updates. However, we're still missing updates from several, and some have wished not to be listed on this website. The ISPs that have confirmed their modems are secure can be found below, and this is in their report. Uh, and they're actually their website has a bunch of FAQ expandable tab things down at the bottom where there's a lot of additional information. Okay, so the effective the affected component is the cable modem's core OS, which is ECOS, E capital C O S, which I had seen before. It's a widely popular embedded multi-threaded real-time OS. Being an embedded OS. Uh, that's it's meant to be small and fast and lightweight. And since it also only runs its own trusted compiled in code, it completely lacks any of the now common anti-malware preventions, such as address space layout randomization, uh, protections against stack smashing or execution and other mitigations. Thus, it freely allows execution of code on the stack. That is, it never expected to have a problem, so it doesn't check for it. I just checked there all of three of my cable, four of my cable modems are vulnerable. So uh -huh. my Eris and my Netgear, yeah. Yep. But I, yep. I run and them I, myself. My ISP doesn't. I got my own. So does that mean my ISP can't fix it? I have to fix it, right? No, uh, I also got my own. I have a Netgear CM1000. That's what a I Doxis. have. Yep. Yep, a very nice Doxis 3.0. Yeah. Um, I know because I have a friend at Cox, thanks to this podcast, who updated my firmware on that. Oh. And I and it, it is not the case that a subscriber is able to apply firmware themselves. Oh. Only, only the WAN side, only <laughs> your ISP is able to update the cable modem. They, they refuse to have foreign firmware attached to their network is the way they think of it but but if you bought it yourself it's still foreign firmware if you update it only yes, the cable you are not can you you it. yes you're <sighs> unable to update the firmware on your cable now, some isps are doing an update eric in our chat room lives in sweden his his swedish isp comham did a security patch for cable haunt it it took out three hundred thousand customers for an hour yes that's going to happen oh my um, god but on the other hand, that's good news because, um, yeah. well, just wait till you hear how bad this is. So there's no protection. The result is that exploits are unusually easy to write, to implement, and to run with high reliability. Code is always at a fixed known address since there's no randomization, and the OS never performs any stack sanity checking, oh, making God. it entirely vulnerable to buffer overflow attacks. This made finding the cable haunt exploit easier for them and makes it that much easier to be exploited. The irony is that okay, code is so, probably written in the room I am sitting in right now. This used to be a Broadcom facility. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, now get this. Our cable modems all have, and I never knew this, I, I ran it this morning, a built-in spectrum analyzer, which can be used to identify connection troubles with, with the cable system. Although the port which exposes the spectrum analyzer may vary by modem make and model, it is readily discoverable with any port mapping tool such as Nmap. And the proof of concept Python script performs this port scan to locate the spectrum analyzer. Okay, now, first of all, there is a very cool port scanner, which I used this morning that I will recommend. Uh, I, I used my GRC's shortcut. It's grc.sc slash APS, Advanced Port Scanner. grc.sc slash APS. Does not, it's free. Does not require installation. You can install it if you want to. Uh, nice looking gal uh, on the website homepage. Uh, they produce 
advanced-port-scanner.com and also advanced-ipscanner.com. Both are free. Both are cool. Uh, the IP scanner, I ran it, and it found all of the systems that I have installed on my LAN across the entire uh, IP space. It's Windows the, only, unfortunately, but... It is, yeah. uh, but there are, but, but you know, LAN port scanners are a dime a dozen now. You can easily find one for Linux and for Mac. So, so if if you just Google like Mac OS port scanner, yeah. uh, you yeah, know, yeah. or LAN port scanner, you, I'm sure you'll you'll find a good well, you one. You can even do it for anyway, command line, right? I mean, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. This one, this this one showed me when I ran it that port 80 was open on my cable modem. And port 8080. Uh, okay, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, so uh, requests to the port scanner on on and and the IP address for for my cable modem is 192.168.100.1. Macintosh and that's the number I'm comes with a network utility app that has a port scanner built in. Ah, very cool. So you don't have to use Nmap. Very or nice. Nmap will do it, but yeah, it's built in yeah. macOS. Yeah, nice. So, uh, so my cable modem is at 192.168.100.1, and it turns out it's listening for its normal web uh, connection on port 80, but it has an, a previously unknown to me spectrum analyzer that you can bring up with your web browser by going to that IP colon 8080. Okay, but... How do you... Uh, but that, that's not your router, that's your cable modem? It has its own address? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your router also yeah. has its own address. Don't confuse the it, two, obviously. Correct. The, the, yeah, the router will be in, no, normally 192.168.0.1 or .1.1 .1 right. is generally where today's routers live. Right. This thing is .100.1. Got it. Okay. Uh, and if you if you put that address into your web browser, you brought, you generally go to that router and it'll say, you know, log in. And you, you're able to look at some normal stuff like the number of corrected and uncorrected packets, how many errors it has. You're able to spot. It's, it's sort of interesting if you've never done it before. Okay. Requests to port 8080 are sent JSON, J-S-O-N, formatted through a WebSocket. A WebSocket is a, is a JavaScript-y way of initiating a TCP or UDP connection over the Internet. However, the JSON deserializer inside the cable modem allocates, get this, Leo, a predefined amount of memory for each JSON parameter. Oh, um, I can see but, the problem already. <laughs> uh -huh. It will keep reading input parameters sure, as long until as a comma it. is reached in the input stream. Uh, Not surprisingly, this can be easily exploited by a malicious request. In their example, and I show them here in the show notes, the F start hertz, you know, the frequency, the, the, the starting frequency for the sp uh, spectrum analysis, F start hertz parameter has a larger value than was allocated in memory and will therefore overflow and overwrite the registers. To, they, they said to validate this, a JSON package with 200 A's as the F start hertz parameter can be sent through the serial connection to the cable modem. This will crash the modem and all register values will be displayed showing that the program counter has changed to OX 41414141, which we all know is four capital A's in hex. And so you, you, you can see in the show notes a, a, a JSON formatted query and where they change F start hertz to all capital A's. Okay, the ECOS OS saves the caller's registers, when, when a subroutine is called, saves the caller's registers on the stack and restores these before returning. Therefore, if the variable registers S0 through S7 are overwritten and the return address register is saved on the stack, as is the case, it's trivial to run any existing code in the system with the attacker's desired input variables. They said, although 
or, or it is that they said in their report, although they did not bother to act to engineer the execution of their own code, they used return oriented programming ROP uh, to essentially execute any existing code on the system in a, what they described as a Turing complete manner, meaning they were able to use existing code just before return instructions to get anything done that they needed to get done, manipulating the system extensively. This then they used to open a Telnet server for external root access to the cable modem allowing remote access to the entire system using the cable modem as a telnet server out to the public internet. Through this telnet connection, they were then able to access a range of methods, including reading and writing arbitrary memory addresses, executing code from any memory address, including ones just written to. They noted that the last steps vary from modem to modem, but they provide a complete example in Appendix B of their report. So the attack can be executed by having the victim run malicious JavaScript. They said a common avenue of attack would be a link that is opened in a browser, but could, for example, also be done through ads on a trusted website or an email client. And as I noted, Leo, anything on your network has access out to the, the cable modem on your perimeter. So if a, if a webcam got compromised or any I, IoT device, um, anyway, so uh, it turns out that the JavaScript running in the browser establishes a web socket connection directly to the modem through the local IP address. Normally, web sockets would the, the web socket access would be security restricted, but it's up to the server to enforce the restriction. And they didn't implement that in the cable modem because we're all friendly. This is on the land side. Nothing malicious would ever happen. And besides, who cares if you see a, a, a spectrum analysis? What they have verified is that it is possible to change the default DNS server, to conduct remote man-in-the-middle attacks, to hop, hot swap code or even entire firmware, to upload flash and upgrade the firmware silently, to disable the ISP's subsequent ability to remotely upgrade firmware in the cable modem, to change any config file and settings, to change associated MAC addresses, to change serial numbers, and to host a botnet. So, um, as we mentioned, unlike our routers, consumers do not update our own cable modems. This is only done from the broadband WAN side. Uh, and as I mentioned, thanks to this podcast, I have a friend at Cox in Atlanta who's deep into the technology. And in the past, he has pushed firmware updates to my Cox connected modems. So I'm sure it can be done. It does cause an outage while the modem receives the firmware, shuts down, reboots, then relocks to the network. But I think it's entirely foreseeable that pretty much everyone who has a cable modem is going to be seeing a brief outage. You uh, can see why long... an ISP is going to be reluctant to do that. I mean, oh lord, the yes, call, the because calls who knows they're going to get? It's going to cost them a lot of money. I mean, Comcast is so huge; they're going to yep. get a million support calls. Yep, my cable, mo and... my cable went out. My modem went out. Well, and of course, they've been pushing uh, phone, so now phone service will be out. Oh, that's right. Anything TV internet. service. Yes, TV service will go Not out. Not cable TV, but anything over your modem will. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Cable modem. Right. So, so did so did digital, so digital phone. If you're service watching would go Netflix, out. bye bye. Not, yep. Not that Comcast minds about that, but. And I'm sure they'll do it at 3 a.m. So, uh, you know, so as to minimize the, the the disruption to everyone. But still, a lot of people have stuff. I mean, who knows, you know, streaming things and they're just assuming that they've got their Internet up. And when they find out it goes down, they'll have no idea why, because there's no right. way for Comcast to notify anybody. Right. Oy, oy, oy. Um, 
So ThreadPost updated their earlier coverage this morning by adding, quote, as far as U.S. ISPs are concerned, a Cox spokesperson told ThreatPost, quote, we're rapidly testing all our in-home broadband equipment, determining any vulnerability and the best steps to mitigate as needed. And a spokesperson with Charter told ThreatPost that Charter is, quote, currently working with each of our vendors to determine if their equipment is vulnerable and when we could expect to see a firmware upgrade. Um, anyway, so as I mentioned, I, I ran the uh, the advanced port scanner, grc.sc slash APS, or just Google advanced port scanner. It's a nice little bit of, of, of freeware with a good reputation. And as I mentioned, um, Mac people have something built in in the network utility. And at least yep. on my install, which is based on Ubuntu, and I bet you all Linux installs, Netcat is, is installed. So you probably already have that in Linux as well. Nice. Netcat. So. So do that against the IP for your uh, cable modem. How do you figure Probably, out what that is? That's a good question. I knew that mine was 192.168.100.1. Um, it is in the manual for your cable modem oh. because there is an admin interface that wants you to change from the default. Oh, okay. uh, some, in some cases, that will prevent the attack, although... Uh, I believe that, and, and this is clear. Uh, this spelled out in in the uh, in in the the uh, website where they have for for the modems they know of. It looks like there is a, a ready authentication bypass as well. But Leo, scroll down. Look what I found. I discovered this in my cable modem at at, at colon eighty eighty. Uh, oh, what was really interesting, it was cool. Now, go a little bit further down. Um, when I went there under Firefox, Fire, uh, what I got was Spectrum Analyzer not supported in this browser. <laughs> Please use Safari or Chrome, which, which again, remember that the, 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 the people who discovered the attack realized that using Firefox made you safe. Firefox cannot be used as the jumping off point for this. On the other hand, remember that anything in your network can be. So this needs to get fixed. Anyway, there's a spectrum analyzer and it was like updating in real time. All this was like going bloom, bloom, bloom and changing. It was just amazing. I had no idea that was in there. So because I use PFSense and I have a firewall between my LAN and my router, I installed a rule to block access to port 8080 at that IP. So until uh, until Cox gets around to updating me, uh, I'm secure. And so that is certainly a, a short-term workaround that, that users who have the ability to add some firewall rules to their router uh, could employ. Say that in again, order so to if you block port 8080 inbound... Well, uh, the will... it, I, eighty eighty for me. Uh, we the there they, they say whatever that your the port, spectrum and analyzer port is. Yes, yeah. exactly, and okay. that's why you need the port scanner in order to to Got for sure it. locate if which is the port where that's operating. If you're if you're somebody in the chat room says, what if I what if, am I not vulnerable if I don't have a spectrum analyzer on my cable modem? Or um, so that's a good question. Um, you're not vulnerable if you don't have Broadcom, and apparently all Broadcom modems do have, have the Spectrum, Spectrum Analyzer. analyzer. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and so, I was um, looking at the list. It's all the commonly used modems. I know. And, and presumably know. Comcast has to be able to ping my modem and say, what are you, so it can apply the appropriate patch. They can do that? Doxus 3 let them yes. do that? Yeah, okay. Yes, they, they absolutely have the ability. In fact, um, uh, my friend in Atlanta was able to put my my cable modem under observation for a while uh, back when, in fact, th th this all happened, Leo, when we were having those dropouts on my connection. Uh, I, I was able to get some uh, amazing service. By the way, it's happening the right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're doing a podcast, do not patch your modem in the middle of a podcast also. Also, Tom's Hardware has some coverage. They said the Liar Birds researchers say Models known to be vulnerable include the Ar the Aris surfboard, that's the one CM8200A, yeah. 
Aura Surfboard SB6183. That's the one I have. Uh, yeah. Aura Surfboard SB8200, Compal 8284E, Compal 8486E, Humax HGB10R-02, Netgear CS3250 EMR, Netgear CG3700 EMR, Netgear CM1000. That's what I got. Apparently, you and I both have those yeah. also. Mm -hmm. I, that's what I have. The Sage M Corn Com uh, <laughs> FAST3686, the Sage M Com FAST3890, Technicolor TC4400, Technicolor TC7230, and Technicolor TC7300, although some firmware versions of those models may not be at risk. And they also, they talked about, oh, they said, we discovered that our aging RS Surfboard SB6141 uses a TI chipset. Oh, so we're out of the, we're out of the woods. Oh. But two later Aris models, the Surfboard SB6183 and 8200 do use Broadcom chipsets. And the latter is on the list of known models vulnerable to cable haunt. So essentially, you know, recent modems and pretty much every modem. Um, so, again, the, the reason I think this is worth thinking about is, I mean, like paying some attention to for our listeners, is that this is like hundreds of millions of cable modems. Uh, the good news is they can be responsibly patched without end user end users needing to do anything. The bad news is it's going to take a while for, I mean, and I don't know how long, you know, weeks for, I mean, they're going to be in a hurry. The cable companies are going to certainly be on this. Uh, Broadcom has been asked about this. They said, um, they said, we, uh, and th this was, uh, might have been Tom's hardware. Yeah, it was. We've reached out to Broadcom for comment and a company spokesperson gave us this statement, quote, we made the relevant fix to the reference code, and this fix was made available to customers in May of 2019. So there's another what? thing that's annoying. Yes. Th this has been known and been available to all of our ISPs since May of last year. And now, only because it came to light... They're all running around and scrambling. So once again, you know, it's like, oh well, uh, hmm, uh, maybe it's not a problem. Uh huh. Well, I know why they don't want to do anything about it. This is going to be a big hassle for them. They're knocking people's yep. <laughs> internet out. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for at least some time, the time it takes to reboot. Yep. Uh, there is a list yeah, also of vulnerable modems on the uh, uh, Cable Haunt site too. It looks like this yes. is pretty similar to the Tom's Hardware list. So. That's probably where they got it. Yeah. 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 <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and there's not, and the thing that's frustrating is there's nothing you can do about it. You have to just get your ISP to do something about it. Correct. The, the end user is unable to update their firmware. It's only uh, doable from the WAN side. Although there is this kind of weird fix where you block the Spectrum Analyzer port. If you could figure out with a yep. port scan which port it is, you might then use a firewall rule uh, to yep. block that port where would the firewall though wouldn't that be on the on the router inside the cable modem where would you does a cable modem well, have so, a firewall too so if you have a cable modem normally oh, that I goes see. then i get it because it's yes. coming from it's coming from inside the house so, <laughs> so, exactly so the, your firewall rule is not from outbound traffic coming into your cable modem it's from right. your computer going to your cable modem right so you want to block outbound traffic on that port Yes, you want to block a you you want to block your router sending something to the what it sees as the WAN right to 192.168.100.1 uh, port whatever it is. <laughs> so that's a and little then, bit of research for most of us because we have to figure out a what our modem cable modem port, uh, address is and then what port the spectrum analyzer uses. Right. Wow. Right. Wow. So. What a mess! Some homework for all yes. of our listeners. It is a it is a real mess. It is again the, you know, it's the this monoculture is a problem. If something big 
like this is discovered and everybody is using the same one, I mean, it is, it's potentially devastating. Whereas if we had a much more heterogeneous environment, it'd be like, oh, well, yeah, some people. But my point is that there's no way that hackers are not on this right now. I mean, there's just no way that they're not working to, to come up with a, a, a an ad that they will stick into the ad stream that will be delivered to people's browsers, most of whom or most of which are now Chrome uh, and will then attempt to access their cable modem and can right now. Nice. Yeah. <sighs> I bet you it's not fixed for some time. I'm just guessing. That's my feeling too. It just yeah. feels like you know they have they they've had they've it, since it, it since May. Since May. Yep. Criminally. 